Hello, I'm Bruce Zimmerman, and this is the Open Line Garden Show podcast for this week. Perennial hibiscus. Now, we're so used to seeing the hibiscus that grows either as a tropical or as a woody shrub. But this one is actually a perennial. It has soft core stems. It dies to the ground each winter and comes up each spring. The feature is that this plant is slow to come up out of the ground. Just like the other Rose of Sharon, which is slow to break bud. So you're going to have to sort of be patient and wait. It does require you to cut down the stems, I would say, in the late fall after all leaves have dropped. You can leave it up for the winter and do it in the spring, but if there's any seed, you may want to take and get rid of it. Some of them seed a lot, some of them seed poorly, and not always do they come up true. So if you've got lots of room and you want to, you could leave them up and or gather the seed and spread them out and start them. Up to you. The rose mallow hibiscus or perennial hibiscus is also known as a swamp rose. This one is the one that's the most common one, the one that's been around the longest and probably the best group of them that everybody knows, okay? The habit is anywhere from three to eight feet, but most of them are around five It grows as a large, multi-stemmed shrub. So it's a shrub replacement in your garden. Its season of bloom is from midsummer on up until frost. Most of them prefer full sun. Some will tolerate half-day shade. So it's something you have to sort of judge And if all else fails, put them in full sun, you'll really get much better results. They do like high organic matter. They do like a moist soil. In fact, they uh, naturalize if you give them some type of wet feet or a wet area. So that in itself makes them a lot easier to grow in lower areas of your garden where it's fairly well-drained, it's organic, but it's moist. It's best used because of its size as an individual specimen in the garden. And this is good in the fact that you can have it bloom later in the season. It gives you change of color, change of season, And, of course, it works as a specimen or a focal point, particularly the taller ones as a focal point in, let's say, a back corner or a less high-profile type of part of your garden because this way, as it comes up late, you'll find that by the time you're really out in the garden, it's starting to show as a shrub and blooms later on. Colors generally are red, pink, scarlet, white, and there's going to be a little bit more towards the lavender blues. They're coming, but they're not all there yet. They do make hedges and screens out of them. It can be done. It's quite easy. But particularly in moisture areas where it's consistent, so that they grow a consistent height. And this is why you would want, let's say, the bottom part of a slope where water may sit in the spring, but you move it up the slope, not down in the very bottom. Not a lot of concerns. Some people have a problem with white fly and aphids and others. I don't in my garden, to be honest with you. Hardiness is basically zone 4 to 9, and they are in many ways great plants because, of course, 
They provide change and interest and shape, and they are really quite bold. Small plants. The Disco Bell is an old, old variety. It's probably one you're used to. 18 to 24, though I have had them as much as 30 inches tall uh, in my garden. Most of the Disco Bell are actually white or red, but I have seen a few pink. Then there's the poinsettia variety. It's going to be five feet tall with red flowers. The radiation is pink flowers and five feet tall. And then we get into the Southern Bell group. The Southern Bell group has red, pink, and white flowers and can get up four to six feet easily. Uh, I have on occasion seen them a little taller in great conditions where they've been really sort of forced, but in most cases they never achieve more than about six feet. Again, it really does like the moist organic soil. This plant is basically a native. It is found in wetlands uh, along the eastern seaboard from Massachusetts to Florida and has been found in the states of Michigan and Alabama as well. So they do go and they do give you very large flowers. The small plants will give you flowers about six inches. The Southern Bell varieties are usually anywhere from six to nine inches across. So that's usually good. And the white usually, as well as the pink, may have a red or raspberry colored eye in the center as well. There is another group of the perennial hibiscus, and this one is known as the Scarlet Rose Mallow. This one's got shaggier leaves. They look more like fingers. They're more of a glossier, fingered-like lobes. There may be as many as three, five, or even seven lobes on a leaf. So it gives you that almost jagged skeletons type look. And that makes them a different texture. They're going to bloom mid to late summer. Their habit is generally upright. It's six to eight feet and three feet wide. Now, with breeding, this one can be wider. It's usually not taller than that. It is a native. It is found in swamps and marshes, etc. So you'll find, again, it still likes the full sun with partial or light shade. It does go by seed, but it is best to actually divide this one. A little bit of problem with Japanese beetle with this one. Hardy to zone 5 to 9. And there are a great number of varieties of this one. Because of the interesting leaves, a lot of breeding has been done, and you will get a lot of the leaves that actually go and give you a darker, more robust, ruby, red, almost black foliage. So we'll see what happens. That's what they're trying to breed to. But they have been around for a while, Lady Baltimore has been around since 78. Pink flowers, satiny centers, which is red, and it's four feet tall. Anne Rundell has the large pink flowers up to nine inches across, four to five feet tall, and uh, it was bred and put out in 1984. Lord Baltimore was showed up in 19... 61, but actually was bred back in 1955. Brilliant red flowers, ruffled overlapping petals, 10 inch diameter flowers on a 4 to 5 inch tall plant. So you can see they're very interesting. Now, some of the newer ones, and this one I happen to grow myself, is Blue River 2. A clear white. That means white with no eye or raspberry or red eye. 
up to 12 inches across are the flowers, four to five feet tall, and it does do that. And it has more of the blue, gray, green leaves as opposed to the shredded type. The Sweet Caroline is a newer variety. It's still four to five feet and nine inch wide flowers, and it has pink flowers. So you've got all of these. Now, in doing a little research, Sheridan Nurseries carries quite a few of these all under their name, Rose Mallow. And Heartthrob is a new one. It's uh, going to bloom July to September. The flowers are burgundy. It's 125 centimeters tall, and it's going to really do a great job in your garden. Copper King, August to September, white with a red eye and copper colored leaves, right? And it's only 100 centimeters tall. Peppermint Schnapps is July and August, and it's red and pink. 120. Pink Elephant, which I thought was funny. July to September, pink, but it's 200 centimeters tall. There is a whole group of perennial hibiscus or rose mallow known as Summerific. Berylicious is one. It has mauve lavender flowers with a deep strawberry red eye. It's 150 centimeters tall and it blooms July and August. Cranberry Crush is absolutely gorgeous because it's glossy, deep red flowers, 120 inches tall. Midnight Marvel is red, July and September, and 125 centimeters tall. And Summer Storm, which is July to September, pink with a magenta eye, and wine purple foliage, 150 centimeters tall. Now, all of these are excellent. There are others that you may want to take a look at. Perfect Storm is one. It's a relatively new one. It's August, September, pink, and only 100 centimeters tall. Midnight Marvel is excellent and it's going to be September June to September it blooms a little earlier red 120 centimeters tall very delicious I love the name deep strawberry red eye July and August I like that one so anyways I couldn't resist I had to do it again one that I really like now there are others and I can tell you more about those. Now, Berylicious is an excellent one, but there's a newer one, and it's going to be called Holy Grail. Now, Holy Grail attracts hummingbirds. It's red. It resists deer. It's a native to North America. It's going to be four to four and a half feet tall, and it's going to need good five feet in spread. So you're going to have to make sure you give it a little bit of shoulder room. Flowers are red, but they are a deep red. The foliage is a black or near black in the shade. So upright habit, and it is an excellent one for part sun to shade, easy to grow, it blooms from midsummer to early fall in basically zone four to zone nine. So that's another excellent one to go and look for. Now the next one is Cherry Choco La Latte. Now this one is a two-tone pink, long blooming. It gives you the fall interest, again a native, tall. 44 to 48 inches. Spacing is still going to be 4 feet. The flowers are pink and white and the petals are overlapping. So it's white with very intense pink veining. Foliage is a greeny purple and in the shade that foliage becomes a dark olive green. Upright, definitely a 
partial sun to full sun plant easy to grow midsummer to fall zone four to zone nine average soil and fertile so it's pretty easy to grow as well now the next one is berry awesome this is a proven winners as well and berry awesome is uh, long blooming attracts hummingbirds deer resistant it's uh, going to be about four feet tall but it really needs to be given some room because it's going to be about five feet across flowers are pink and it's a lavender pink the foliage is green and it can in the shade get to more of a dark midnight green it is going to be easy to grow mid summer to early fall blooming zone four to nine and it average soil so you're going to look at this one and it's got a little bit of a ruffle on the outside the next one is ballet slippers and i like this one because it's white it's got the raspberry red eye but it's got this light tone pink and the petals often recurve a little bit inside so that it adds a little interest to the flower itself now it's going to be 48 to 52 inches tall you're going to need 60 inches for it because it's it's very wide the flowers are very pretty i like it and it's white edge with a blush green foliage bright green in the shade upright partial sun midsummer to early fall zone four to nine average soils but it does like an alkaline ph so that means here in niagara that's a given right with the limestone bedrock but you may want to give it a little bit of lime every couple of years just to keep it the soil sweet i'm bruce zimmerman this is the open line garden show podcast for this week